Now we will discuss language choice in production and perception and how it is been analyzed. It, is, it has been analyzed with the help of neuroimaging of language processing. In the last two decades, our understanding of functional organization of the human language capacity has increased enormously. And with this, we have seen the advancement of new technologies in the area of brain studies. We have neuroimaging, which has been developed very recently. And it is uh, among these techniques, we have functional magnetic resonance imaging, which is fMRI. It's not the only technique. We have other techniques as well. For example, we have diffusion tensor imaging, which is DTI. Then we have uh, something like postron emission tomology, which is PET, event related potentials, which is EPT, ERT. And all these are the new technologies which look at the brain activity and the morphology. So, with these advancements, it has been made possible to look at different activities that take place in brain. Now, neuroimaging studies have shown that the initial speech perception takes place in the posterior of planum temporal, which is the cortical area, and language production. It has been seen to be closely related to Broca's areas activity corresponding to verbal functions, also include verbal fluency, processing of grammar, sentence structure, comprehension, and so on. And it has been seen that BA45 has also been connected to the participation in the language function. So all these things have been made possible through the studies of neuroimaging. So let's discuss that. Now, neuroimaging of bilingual processing is still in its infancy and even for big questions such as the neural substrates of individual language and more refined techniques have yet led to real conclusion. Now we see that in perception characteristics of input sounds are that are language specific will trigger the system to expect input in a given language. In language production we see that language choice is essentially top-down process. And in this, as we see that while some studies report that the same areas of the brain are used to process L1 and L2, other studies report this disassociation of the areas used by the two languages. We have the study conducted by Paradis who warns against Simplified overgeneralization with respect to neural substrates of languages. He points out that differences in proficiency may lead to the use of different strategies, for example, pragmatic versus lexical, which have been shown to be located in different parts of the brain. Now, in addition, there is also the evidence that type of bilingual early versus late has an effect on cognitive processing even for the near native speakers of the second language. Now based on all that, it is quite clear that in future neuroimaging may become a useful tool to understand changes in processing that are associated with learning of or forgetting. And it may even help under determine whether what we present is actually processed, which brings us close to the input intake discussion in the second language acquisition. To conclude, 
in perceptual language choice is both top down and bottom up whereas in production the choice is essentially a top down process neuroimaging though new but has a broad scope to be a useful tool in understanding processes associated with learning